Russia will be left without fuel. Analyst about a new drone attack on Russian oil refineries. Ukrainian military expert Valery Ryabik said that due to Ukrainian drone attacks on the Russian oil refinery on the night of May the 17th, Russians fear that the country and army may be left without fuel. The progress is associated with the increase in the production of attack drones in Ukraine. In this category, we are talking specifically about drones of the fierce type, which are long range and hit targets at distances of more than 1,000 kilometers, he said on the Espresso TV channel. Ryabik assured that Ukrainian drones achieved their goals during the attack in Crimea, Novorossiysk and Krasnodar territories. An analysis carried out on explosions and arrivals in Novorossiysk, Tuapse and Sevastopol shows that the majority of drones that flew still reached their targets. Perhaps there were not 102 drones, but for example 200. Among the targets was an oil refinery in Tuapsi, fuel and lubricant terminals in the Novorossiysk port, and energy infrastructure facilities in Sevastopol, the analyst noted. According to him, Russia notes that such attacks by Ukraine are effective, especially when it comes to the Tuapsi oil refinery. In the Russian Federation, they note that such strikes are more effective than their repairs. They are already expressing concern. They say that if such strikes are carried out in the future, the Russian Federation will be left without fuel. According to the occupation forces that carry out terror on the territory of Ukraine, then so did the population, he added. On May the 17th, Ukrainian kamikaze drones successfully attacked oil refining facilities in the Krasnodar region. The Russian project Vichik OGPU publishes data on losses, citing reports from local security forces. Novorossiysk was attacked by at least 30 unmanned aerial vehicles and the Twapsi oil refinery by at least two. An attack by Ukrainian drones on a Russian oil refinery in Tuapsi led to an emergency shutdown of the enterprise. This was reported by Reuters, citing sources familiar with the situation. Russia-obsessed Western elites acting like delinquents. Kremlin. Some Western leaders are so obsessed with sticking it to Moscow that they're behaving like delinquent youths who have no regard for the consequences of their actions Russian Deputy Foreign Minister Sergei Ryabkov has said. He made the comment in an interview with TASS, during which he discussed the poor state of US-Russia relations. Washington and its allies are prepared to balance on the edge of direct armed conflict with us, even though it undermines their national security, he added. There are plenty of people among those in power in the US and other key Western states who are de facto provocateurs. They've made testing Moscow's resolve the goal of their existence, Ryabkov said. Such individuals are political bullies, he added, describing them using a Russian term for delinquents and members of teen gangs who reject any kind of rules. They are preoccupied with crossing any red line drawn by Moscow, regardless of the risk of this brinkmanship, said the minister. Americans in particular seem to be hell-bent on irritating Russia, he claimed. As they please their own geopolitical notions, they bring closer to the phase in which holding control of events and preventing a catastrophic collapse would be very difficult, said Ryabkov. They live in a bubble and do not perceive outside signals that go against their preconceptions. The Russian diplomatic core is therefore severely limited in how it can interact with Western governments, particularly those of NATO countries, he stated. What is happening in the Western direction is currently the job of the military and security officials. Diplomacies work there, I would say, in a crisis management mode aimed at preventing an escalation into a really massive conflict, Ryabkov said. The US-led bloc is a group to which we feel not an ounce of trust, which triggers political and even emotional rejection in Moscow. This entrenched hostility is one of the reasons why claims that Russia could interfere in the US presidential election in November make no sense. According to the minister, he compared such statements to a vinyl record so overused that it can only produce noise when played. As a matter of fact, it is irrelevant for us who the next US president will be, he explained. No chance for the improvement of the situation can be seen considering the fundamental anti-Russian consensus of the American elites. Putin and Xi are preparing for war amid public chatter about peace. 
Vladimir Putin's visit to China is presented by both countries as coordination of peace efforts, although in fact Beijing and Moscow are preparing to confront the West. The British publication The Telegraph writes about this, analyzing the first statements of Putin and Xi Jinping. In on-camera comments ahead of the closed-door talks, the two leaders talked about global stability and resolving conflicts such as the war in Ukraine. But when they sat down to negotiate, it became clear that it wasn't all about peace, The Telegraph said. The publication emphasizes that Putin brought, in particular, his new Minister of Defense, Andriy Belousov, to Beijing. But his predecessor, Sergei Shoigu, who was transferred to the Security Council of the Russian Federation, is also part of the delegation, together with the leaders of Rosatom and Roscosmos. Putin's visit to China highlights the rapid expansion of military cooperation between the two allies, which has caused concern in Western capitals. He and Mr. Xi have made no secret of their willingness to work together in a borderless partnership to reshape the US-led world order. The Telegraph writes, the publication recalls that Beijing refused to condemn Russian aggression against Ukraine and in turn feeds the Russian military industrial complex with the necessary raw materials and dual-use components. Meanwhile, Russia has consistently emphasized Beijing's support on issues related to Taiwan, which China has threatened to invade. In early May, U.S. intelligence warned the Senate Defense Committee about joint military exercises between China and Russia in the East China Sea near Taiwan. Avril Haines, director of national intelligence, told U.S. senators, China definitely wants Russia to cooperate with them and we see no reason why Russia wouldn't. Ahead of his visit, Putin told China's Xinhua news agency that the meeting would promote joint efforts to strengthen the territorial integrity and security of our countries as part of a strategic partnership of coordination for a new era. On the full scale of what this means for military and geopolitical cooperation, the two autocratic leaders are likely to keep the West guessing. The Telegraph writes, 